probably Sine. Um, the ranges of Aryan's uh, characters are all pretty um, short range. I think banning the long range Megami is kind of strong. Of course, Obero Yurina is just pretty simplistic beatdown, and I think. Um... What are they doing? But simplistic beatdown, and I think that um, the coil uh, and uh, Mizuki all have good tools against it. Uh, as I suspect, oh no, he banned. Interesting. So he's not running running cow chops and no rush of blades. Just worth mentioning, as well as not running ninpo walk. Um, to enhance the steel strings. This is very typical with Caltrop builds. Um, this is because your opponent is trapped pretty much from all ranges from two to four. So if you're not running Caltrops, Ninpo Walk tends to be a bit stronger to enable the steel strings. But it's very rare for your opponents to be able to reach anything outside of the range two to four when the reshuffle happens. There is some shenanigans with Windy Stage and going to range zero, but eh, it's not very realistic. And um, match begins. I think they're deciding on moles. I think M4 already mold. I don't think Arion has. By the way, um, just to make sure this is no one else is talking, are they? I'm just making sure my headset's working properly. Is this true? Okay, yeah, but the other one else is muted. Okay. Mm. Alrighty, let's see what happens here. Aryan does end up getting the steady advance. That's the ideal first turn. I'm expecting something along the lines of Conscript 3. Could be Conscript 2, Advance 1. Although in this matchup, I think Conscript 3 is probably just better. He's got one. He's got two. Will he get a third? And he just get the third. I'm just expecting um I'm expecting Spearman Calvary Shield Bear. That's the uh, typical combination. That I would assume we have Spearman. Oh, double Spearman. And is it a um uh, and Shield Bear? Okay. I ends up foregoing the Calvary. Um I kinda like the Calvary personally. Um against Oboro, but he's kinda making the decision, I guess, that they won't reach R2 in the first cycle. That is possible. But I do. I would have liked to have seen a Spearman swapped out for a Calvary, just for the uh, having more options, as well as um, the potential to maybe get some Glancing Strike off, which I think he did bring. I'm not a hundred percent sure about the Glancing Strike. Uh, fairly awkward hand for Arion here. Um, I would just dis discard the short ranged attacks. Um, and then spend at least, uh, probably spend all your Vigor, too. All right, one Vigor to advance. Um, this gets a bit dicey. I still think you want to get rid of the two short-ranged attacks. Um, so this is a very tricky part in Sakura Arms, where both players are offensive, because you never want to be the one who spends all the resources to move into your opponent's range. Um, it's just more efficient for your opponent. So the, at this particular part of the game, it's about managing your resources properly to where you're being able to get extra flair um, without walking right into your opponent's ranges and just getting trashed. So usually you're going to see a bit of you know, a lot more hesitation and uh, movement at this sort of stage of the game. Also to make sure your opponent doesn't get um, unnecessary value that they shouldn't have gotten if you just would have played your first cycle a bit better. Um, I can see why I'm uh, struggling with the discard here. Uh, I, um, Sunny Stage is a bit of a weird card. Yeah, because there has to be Shadow. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be an end turn here. So this is about as perfect as it can get, because um, M4 is aura locked. So he'll have to go to range 5, um, spending 1 Vigor. And then he'd have to spend at least 2 more action points to go to R4. And even with all that, it would only be 1 attack. 2 if he commits the Steel Strings, which he likely won't. Um, well, actually he might, because he might not get a chance to use it. So... I do think Arion... This is a bit earlier, but I'm pretty sure Arion molds Song and Dance. So I would have liked to have seen him hold on to it. 
Um, Song and Dance is actually an interesting card to keep because if he had Song and Dance right now, I think he would have been able to avoid his opponents, all of his opponents' attacks. In this case, he takes one life damage. Um, he could Shield Bear because if he Shield Bears, what does that mean? He gets two cards, four Vigor, assuming R4. He could connect a 3 2 next turn with the Shield Bear. As well, if his opponent spends another Vigor, he could get some more. Let's see if his opponent decides to play around um, the attack from Decorio by going to zero, holding one Vigor. is a bit less efficient, but we will see what he opts for. So he does go into R5. Nothing available yet. I'm assuming Brandish is going to be discarded, as well as potentially Art of Drawing. Uh, I think it's going to be Steel Strings, personally. I think it's going to be Brandis and Steel Strings discarded to go to R4. Then I think Slash will be played, and he holds on to the Art of Drawing. Seems like the most logical thing to me. And he gets to hold on to a Vigor, which allows him to play around the Tokoyo attack. I personally think that is my uh, my personal take on uh, what should happen. Backs up a bit. Uh, his actions, I mean. So, yep, he spends a Vigor. No. Back to Vigor 2, back to Vigor 1. Advances, so I'm assuming Brandish and Steel Strings are going to be discarded. Yep, oh, yep, yep, advance, then Slash. This is where I would have liked to have seen Arion hold on to the song and dance, uh, but he did not. I think he molded it, so he is going to take a minor punish here. Um, slash comes down, you always take this to life, nothing else makes sense. He's thinking, okay, well, um, well, actually, what the fuck? Are you serious? What? Okay, so everything's happening. What well, Arion's actually thinking about is Shield Bear. Shield Bear is intriguing here, right? Um, yeah, Shield Bear is very interesting here. Actually, I would like to see Ari um, uh, Arion play Shield Bear. Now, whether you take this to Aura or Life, personally, I'm not sure about You take it to Aura, actually. Yeah, actually, I want to see Arion take, um, play Shield Bear and take this to Aura. I'm trying to think of the punish here. Uh, I don't think there's a punish this way. And Arion is able to swing back a lot of damage. I would like to see Shield Bear played here to make it a 2-1. Takes it to Aura, and then there's no punish here from him. Well, actually, yeah, there's still no punish. There's no punish. So I would like to see this from Arion. Also, impairing the, um, empowering rather the counter offensive here, I think will be good. Arion might not be thinking it's worth the value, but I think the value to um, get to R2 is rather important at the cost of less resources to avoid the the. The plus one, plus one of the art of drawing. I would really like to see the. Um... Okay, so he does end up shield bearing. He does take it to Aura. This is what I like to see. And then this turn. So this is a pretty good turn now for Arian. Um, there's a song and dance. Uh, I think the outcome would have been more or less the same if you would have song and dancer versus shield bear, uh, in my opinion. I'm pretty sure that's how it would have gone. So a glancing strike gets shuffled to the top. It's not super great. Um, I mean, it's decent, but I mean, he's not going to take frustration damage to draw it. But still getting one uh, life damage off of glancing strike your first cycle is nothing to complain about. So um, Endless snow. We're going to start it off with a nice endless snow. And is going to get the research too. So this is sort of the Takoyo trap. Um, if you don't hold at two vigor, the end of your turn, um, your opponent will get value from their Takoyo card. So it's a bit of a trap because if you were to go to zero, your opponent gets the buff on the Takoyo attack. If you go to one, your opponent's allowed to get the research on the endless snow. So that's what makes this um, a bit tricky uh, to manage against Takoyo. Um, so from our, I mean, from M4's point of view, I think he's played fairly well. Um, I do think that potentially attacking there might have been wrong. Um, 90% of the time there, it's usually right. But 
against particularly Mizuki and Takoyo, I think actually holding the attack and discarding um, the art of drawing and staying at two vigor probably would have been better. Uh, I know it sounds weird, but I do think um, one of the biggest strengths of Takoyo Mizuki is it's very hard not to not want to spend your cards because Mizuki has ways to um, nerf the cards damage as well as empowering their own attacks. But see, this is why I was saying in general, Arion's pair uh, seems is really good into um, control or into aggressive because it forces his opponents to attack and then empowering his own attacks this way. So glancing strike coming down, he's going to be taking this to life. I don't believe there's a reaction possible. It does go to the top of the deck, although, as I mentioned before, I do not think this will be relevant. Um, Marion deciding if he wants to play the 3-2. Um, you definitely do. Um, there's no reason to hold it. Um, you can also advance and play the 2-1. Um, so I would just play the 3-2 and the 2-1. Uh, if M4 uh, checks the math, uh, the three two should go to aura and the two one should go to life. Um, there is a bit of a trap here uh, with Aron walking into R two and Caltrops, um, but the Caltrops will just go to life. And as long as Aron calculates the fact that he'll have to lose a card, um, I think he just makes sure he should play everything out of his hand here. Um, either that, or you can take the alternative approach. Um, to where um, you hold two cards, and so you have to discard one, and you'll have an even reshuffle. Um, but that's, of course, up to Arion. But I definitely think he should just kind of move forward and play out his hand and just discard the song. And then just like kind of move forward, just basically move forward, attack with everything, and then. Just take some recover actions. That's what I would like to see here personally. So starting out with the, uh, you can discard the song and dance, move forward, three two, um, two one, and spend an order to recover, and then you're fine. I mean, yeah, I mean there is a bit of a trap here with the uh, uh, caltrops and the art of drawing, but it's a two one into a three two. 2-1 goes to life, and then 3-2 just goes to aura. Passes. That I'm not stoked about. Not stoked about that one. Although he will get the song and dance here, which is nice. Um, he doesn't end up taking the T2, but now it's just a bit awkward. Um, I feel M4 has more resources than he should be allowed. Um, so he just, he's just going to kind of tank up. And now, um, yeah, Aryan does get the 3-2. He could actually make it a... But now um, Aryan's kind of made it tricky for himself to attack. Mm -hmm. Although he does have a lead here. Um, does deny the Caltrops. Um, I guess he technically saves himself some life damage at the trade-off of Aryan's aura damage. Um, but with, I think, um, forcing M4 to burn resources to recover was a bit more valuable in my opinion, but I do think that this is definitely a feasible play as well, because he does get to dodge out the trap, which I think is uh, very key, as well as setting himself up for a glancing strike. Um, M4 looking to Orlock now himself. Um, this could definitely be very strong. Yeah, I think he should just discard everything. He's got silver traps. I'm actually intrigued. Um, one, two, now you need an impo walk. Never mind. I was thinking of an Uro Uro build, but it's not worth. And focus. This is also the negative side of this play. Um, when your opponent has a lot of aura, um, it allows them to focus a lot more aggressively, which particularly for Urina is very strong, which is why you traditionally want to put a lot of pressure against Urina or have some way to flare drain, um, which Aryan does have. But when you give your opponent this much freedom, 
um, you allow them to take more focus options, which as I've mentioned before with urine, can be very deadly, um, particularly with the Sugakage crush, which M4 swears by. So also another reason to potentially play out your attacks there to weaken the aura, to force your opponent to take the recover basic action rather than the focus. Worth mentioning. Um, So yeah, as I mentioned before, M4 kind of just taking the extra time to refocus. He kind of has a dead hand, especially in terms of attacks. Um, could just use his um, Vigor to just recover. Ends up just passing um, after advancing once, it seems. Um, this is obviously just a setup for the art of drawing, which I'm sure Aryan should be privy to. All right. We have a few options here. Um, what the right one is is intriguing. So there's a lot of things to talk about uh, with this line. Um, of course, you can just slam down the steady advance, get it back your shield bear and recover. But there's actually an interesting thing she's going to do. But I do want to talk about an alternate option. Um, there was the potential to back up and play Glancing Strike. Now, I know that's not usually a particularly attractive option, but because he was at Vigor 2, it would have allowed him to put Glancing Strike on top of the deck, which is very powerful. Um, with this line of play, it does save him from the art of drawing, but he also could have just been an additional recover or, or additional action, just a tank out of uh, the art of drawing. Um, so this is definitely the safer play for Ion. But I, I fear that playing too safe against Yurina will allow her to just charge up her flare. I personally would have, I'm not sure what play I would have come to, but I definitely would have considered the retreat option into the glancing strike um, and putting it back on top. I think that would have been a very inter interesting option. Um, also as well, oh wait, did he shuffle, pull two? Uh, I don't. Uh, the turns are taking so long, but I'm pretty sure that the uh, counter offensive was buffed as well. So I think playing that out, yeah, I think it was. I think playing that um, could have also been an opportunity just to get some more aura damage, but I talked about this concept before of pressuring your opponent's aura so they can't focus, especially with big focus um, users like Sine, Yurina. Um, what are some other ones? Um, Korunu, sort of. Um, yeah. <sighs> so let's see. The offensive sequence from Aryan's a bit awkward. Um, you definitely want to play the slash this turn. The hilt strike is debatable. The induce is useless. The art of um, art of drawing is useless. Um, Sugakage or Nami. And Mikazura, right? Yeah, Mikazura is just a trick um, in the specials to throw off his opponent. Oh, did Aryan remove his zone? How many how many uh, units conscripted does he have? Okay, he's got full conscript. Okay, that's what I thought. Because I wasn't sure if he just started stacking them. Um, there is a bug in the mod where when you slide your cards. Um, into the zone they get shown as well as a bug where um, the zone can't hold more than three cards so typically uh, players will just delete the zone and stack the cards so your opponent don't know uh, what cards you can script um, so that is why there was a change in the formation of the cards but yeah this is sort of a weak turn uh, i personally don't know if you hold on to the hill strike the answer is probably no, uh yes I don't think that getting two extra aura damage is worth. So this is um, this is a strategy that I'm actually very familiar with. This is the King's Road strategy, or as particularly with M4. This is a strategy where you you walk into your own ranges, you play out as many attacks as you can. And then you walk back into the uh, distance two range. What this strategy achieves is it makes it to where you're able to get off all your attacks in the proper range and then move 
um, to, to R2 or range two where your opponent doesn't have as many options. Um, this is a definitely a very good strategy, but as I've talked about um, previously, attacking into Arion is definitely very dangerous. So M4 goes for the M4 strategy, where he just focuses and recovers, a lot more of a passive uh, strategy from M4. Um, as uh, you may have heard me talk about in the past, M4 is definitely uh, known for his more passive style. Whether how good it is, um, stands to be uh, still stands to be seen but I personally am someone who likes playing out a lot of their attacks and limiting my opponent's resources and M4 tends to take a step back and likes to recover and focus more neither strategy is right or wrong I just think there's right times for things wrong time for things in this particular instance actually I think I am a fan of M4's um, slower approach here I do think this is going to be his win condition to start pressuring with um, his uh, cards. I actually think that M4 is rather favored, and I think uh, Arian um, really should have put pressure on him when he had the chance. See, and this is this goes into Mizuki, and this is why Mizuki is one of the more controversial characters in the community with how good she is. This right here is the biggest weakness of Mizuki. Mizuki's biggest strengths is when you're attacking into her. Mizuki plays the game where she says, all right, if you're going to hit me, I'm going to hit you a lot harder. And your opponent just goes, you know what? Well, I'm not going to hit you. And then Mizuki says, well, shit. So that's kind of the situation where Arion's in right now, where he has essentially a card on the left that's useless, sunny stage with no shadow, which is useless. His opponent has zero vigor, which is actually the one boon of this turn, is that with the two, I think uh, M4 probably could have played that a little bit differently, but you can play the two one and he'll get a life damage, which is the saving grace of this turn. But you're essentially st um, stuck with a bunch of cards that aren't very useful. Another strategy that is being implemented by M4, which is worth mentioning, is a strategy known as shadow sucking, or really whatever you want to call it, shadow draining. I call it shadow sucking. Um, shadow sucking makes it, uh, as the name might sound like, is that there's no shadow. What this forces your opponent to do is if they want to back up to R3 to unlock some of their attacks, it makes it more difficult to where... Um, to where they have to spend aura to back up. Um, not sure what uh, Manglu is doing, but I'm sure he's doing something. Um, 33, 49. What the, I don't know what. What? Oh, are we gonna talk about some cards? Are you gonna Are you gonna show the cards I'm talking about? All right. Anyway, so this makes it to where um, where there's no shadow. It makes it harder for your opponents to retreat. So in order to create shadow here, Ion starts his turn by generating some shadow. What this will allow him to do is, because of the one flare cost and the one one that M4 chose to take to Aura, it makes it to where your opponent has to generate shadow, which will allow Sunny Stage to be played here. Um, this is a good strategy um, to make it to where his Sunny Stage will get some value. Um, because, of course, Sunny Stage's uh, enhancement costs uh, two shadow, so this is very good. Um, it's going to discard um, some cards, the useless cards I talked about before. Uh, I'm really shocked if he doesn't play the 2-1 here. I'm fairly certain that just goes to life unless I have a misunderstanding of the card, which I don't think I do. His opponent has zero vigor, so that should, should be just one of the life damage he can play out. I'm not sure why he wouldn't opt to play that. Um, M4 pull, I mean, not M4, Mengluo pulling up the card now. Oh, there it is. If your opponent zero is eager, you choose the type of damage dealt by this attack. So yeah, he could play this. I'm not sure why he wouldn't. The only reason I can think that he wouldn't play this is so he can hold it um, to better get a reaction for uh, counter-offensive. But this just does not seem correct. Lots of lag happening right now. Play Sunny Stage, uh, I'm not sure about this. So I think what Arion is thinking is, you know, I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna get the reaction value. Um, this is a bit of a, what I call an off dwell. Let's see what happens here. See, it's, oh my goodness. Uh, Arion's letting this slip away. So yeah, this is, um, you can't. Oh yeah, he just loses it. This is, oh, this is, this is, this is sad. 
Yeah, this is a very demonstrable misplace here from Arion. But so the Caltrops came down. Caltrops' passive effect is that it has no reactions. So actually, Arion had two options here. He could have just played the Calvary and not played the Sunny Stage, which would allow him to reaction it. Um, and he just slams down Ardip Drawing. Uh, it looks like so. So anyway, uh, a lot of things just happened. So the Caltrops went off. Um, he ended up uh, taking it to life to play around, um, oh, what is it? Uh, Furia Blades, Russia Blades, Russia Blades. Um, so that's why he took it to life. And because he took the cow traps from the trap position, it removed his 2-3, which is a card he probably just should have played to gain one life damage. So I hate to say it, I don't like calling games, but this game just feels a little doomed. Um, from Aryan, I mean, from Aryan's position, I know the life lead isn't staggering, but this is very limiting, I think, to what Aryan's going to be able to achieve for the rest of this game. Um, for all the people here who are familiar with Yurina, Yurina gets very strong on, with her resolve ability, which, when she has three life or less, um, her abilities get enhanced. And as the game goes slower and slower, she's able to stack up a bunch of flare, and she's able to start hitting really hard. Um, in particular, Arion's particular build is a more defensive build. Um, so while Arion does have the opportunity to cancel Sukakage Crush with a Mortal Flower, um, I just think the, the overwhelming amounts of pressure that Yurin is going to start achieving is going to be a bit uh, dicey here. So you're going to start seeing for Arion playing out some attacks, because you know once you hit that 6-7 flare range, um, Focusing starts becoming a little irrelevant unless you're playing against like something weird like Yatsuha or something and you're trying to break reflections, but as of course not the match we're playing. Um, I mean, all right. oh my gosh, is he not going to play any attacks? You've got to play attacks here. I mean, I know it doesn't feel good. Maybe it's not. What do you do? You brandish, you song and dance, then what? I mean, this is all pretty demonstrable. Let's see. Okay, so he chooses that. Brandish gets song and danced here. Very likely, at least. But yeah, that I didn't I didn't get a whole a lot of chance to talk about it. But yeah, that last turn was very punishing. Arion had the opportunity to get one life damage, and not only was he denied the one life damage, he was denied the card as well into the discard pile. And there's definitely a few ways he could have prevented it. And the easiest one was just playing it. Um, so he wanted to hold it for a reaction, but I guess didn't play around the Caltrops that was incoming um, from M4. Although worth mentioning, uh, the Caltrops was, had not been shown um, at that point. So of course, Ion didn't 100% know if uh, Caltrops was an option. So I'm choosing to not believe it was and ended up getting punished for it. Um, which is a pretty massive punish. Uh, one life damage doesn't seem like a whole lot, but in a game with narrow margins, one life is uh, definitely a lot. As well as the uh, passing up the glancing strike opportunity. Anyway, 2-2 two -two coming down. Um, as I've talked about um, previously, you know, Mizuki likes getting attacked into. But here's the dicey part. Um, I think M4 is more willing to attack um, well, because there's no guarantee of a, uh, st uh, not a steady advance, a counter offensive coming down, um, simply because the card is discarded and he would have to reshuffle and pull it. Of course, M4 isn't a hundred percent sure about that, but it's something, you know, believable. So we'll see what M4 opts into. It's not because there is it? No, it's not me, because uh, yeah, this is going to be very difficult for Arion to really string some offense together. I mean, um, M4 to really string some offense together this turn, considering two of his cards are range two. I um, mean, he's at range four, and he's aura locked himself. Um, I wonder if there is a line where you just stay and you just jam all your stuff. Mm, probably gets like one life damage or something. Two, one, two, one, two, 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 two. I believe is what the range started at. I could be wrong, but I thought the range started at range two. I don't know, this turn's been going on for a while, but I'm pretty sure the range was at range two. Um, Cause he backed up to brandish and then, yeah. 
Wait, correct me if I'm wrong. Oto Ge Tanishi has still not been played, correct? Um, that's it. That's in his specials. Uh, yeah. So he's still holding on to that, right? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Oh, this is actually something worth mentioning that I should have thought about earlier. The gate here is actually a little weaker here now that I'm thinking about it, and the reason is is that uh, Yurina Obro output a lot of pressure, and the way that Arion's chosen to play this matchup is he's made it into a bit of a slower matchup. By default, it doesn't necessarily not favor Arion, but the problem is, is that Arion's not matching the resource gain that M4 has. And when I mean the resource gain, I'm particularly talking about Flare. So if Arion, if Arion were to not have a Mortal Flower, um, which he does have, able to play right now, then M4 would be able to get a lot more pressure because, of course, um, Tsukikage Crush is a 4-4. Four, four. So essentially, you would have to take everything to life. If you take a 2-1 to Aura, then you get clonked by a 4-4, four, four, which, of course, we know will be countered by a Mortal Flower, and I'm sure um, Arion knows this as well. So the, my point being is that he needs 5 Flare. So we just take this to Aura. He's kind of just saying, no, or, or what? Um, Arion knows he's not in any danger because of a mortal flower. So now I'm curious to see if he's going to play the Sukakage Crush. The answer is certainly no, because that would be game losing. So he chooses not to play the Sukakage Crush, and it is now his turn. So again, Arion's put into an awkward position to where he doesn't have a lot of aura. He's slowly just getting bonked away, and it's becoming very tricky to sustain this much longer. Um, so it's going to be a rather difficult game for him to recover. Uh, Yikes does not draw the counter offensive, which is the card he was looking for. That is a feels bad. He can play the steady advance to get his aura nice and full again, but we're just resetting the same problem. Um, but that is going to be the card that he plays because nothing else makes sense. Um, that, that hurts a lot. But yeah, I am for being able to um, kind of weaken his opponent. I think Aryan definitely had some opportunities to really turn up the offense, and now I just think Aryan just has too much of a lead. Yep, Endless Snow is kind of a sure. I mean, yeah, it does suck for Aryan. I mean, for M4 that he doesn't have enough for Sugakage, but I mean, now what? I mean, you just have such an awkward turn. Yeah, okay. Two Vigor, yeah, recover twice. Uh, sunny stage, okay. This is a little dicey. It plays into to um. Actually, no. This actually aggressively plays into art of drawing. All right, doesn't matter. Uh, but okay. Uh, yeah, that was a little dangerous from Arian. He could have just taken a four three there. Um. Oh, is it played? It's not played, is it? Or maybe it is played. I think I'm wrong. Is it played? Is that the first thing he played the cycle? Oh, yeah, it is. My bad. That is incorrect. He did not play into it because Art of Drawing was the first thing that was played this cycle. I forgot. It's been like 30 minutes. Anyway, so we have a slash offense potential here. So, so it's a 3 1 2 1 2 1. Or not. Induced? Who cares? What? Oh, wait. Induced. No, no, it doesn't matter. I thought induced did something else, and it does not do something else. Okay. Well, I guess M4 is just focusing a bunch this turn because he's if he's played Hilt Strike, then like okay, all right, sure. Is Ion just going to keep flaunting the fact that he has a Mortal Flower? I mean, you might as well, I guess. I mean, why is M4 even playing this? I don't know. Could have just used it to focus. Who cares? Mm. All right. Too good a shadow. Sure. <gasps> Sukagaki Crush. It's not happening. There's no way he ever plays it. It's, it doesn't make sense. Sure. Are you going to shadow? What? Okay. Spent two actions to f recover. Wait, what? Wait, what did he just spend? Ah, uh, whatever. 
All right, Arian's turn again. Another opportunity for a one life damage. Will he take it this time? Perhaps. Uh, recover, recover. Back up. Yeah, see, this is actually an interesting uh, concept that I learned after playing a lot of Takoyo. Is a, um, you might hear that it's really almost never worth taking the retreat option. Um, there are two times, though, as a, as a rule of thumb of when you want to use the retreat option. Use the retreat option to or lock the shit out of your opponent. Uh, this is very key, because if you can completely turn off your opponent's capabilities by them having full aura, and you having longer, a shorter ranged attack, and your opponent has shorter ranged attacks, and you have longer ranged attacks, having lower aura doesn't matter because your opponent can't touch you. Of course, you have to think about enhancements, and maybe they can unlock themselves, but again, that's a very matchup thing. Uh, but the second time that I actually think you do want to retreat, and it does happen with two characters primarily, and it's Sine. And it's actually, in my opinion, Takoyo. Retreating, spending one aura, if you can guarantee one life damage um, from glancing strike, I actually think a lot of the time is worth it. Now, of course, it's not worth it 100% of the time. But in Takoyo games, you tend to have a lot of resources because you have a lot of cards that generate vigor. Or you at least have one card that generates vigor in addition to Sunny Stage if you played it your previous turn, which gives you a lot of extra resources. So spending those extra resources to connect the glancing strike a lot of the time feels good. And I know I keep talking about this from a long time ago, but playing that glancing strike out the same turn that he had the opportunity, the, the turn that he played the steady advance was actually going to be so massive because not only was the glancing strike going to get one to life, it would have put it on top of his deck and allowed him to hit his opponent with glancing strike twice, which is two life damage. Um, instead of playing the steady advance there to play conscripted units that he hasn't used yet. So I really do think that it was a missed opportunity um, the turn that he played his uh, second steady advance. Um, I think that was could have been used a lot better to get the glancing strike on top of his deck by discarding his other card. Discarding the steady advance to retreat, playing the glancing strike, which gives you one life damage. Because, I mean, something that I haven't mentioned yet, but I guess I'll mention now. Um, uh, Yurina and Obero are very reaction light. They don't have any real counters to it with the exception of Induce. Now, I don't remember, but the biggest counter to Induce is making sure that you have five aura. Because the Induce uh, card, uh, the way I view the Induce card is you say you make your opponent focus or you make them advance. Um, that's essentially the way the card reads. So this card is the only counter to Glancing Strike from R4. But it doesn't matter if your opponent has 5 aura, because if you play it, they can't advance. So you can make them focus, but it doesn't achieve anything. So if Arion would have taken that into consideration, I do think he could have actually strung together a lot more life damage here. Okay. Wait, what? Oh. Yeah, this is just rough. Um, we're just going to see a, probably another recovery here. I mean, he, he, I, don't, wait, I, I, I don't know. I want almost. I want. I, I want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding the way that Takoyo attack card works. I cannot believe that card has not been played yet. There's no way that that Takoyo attack it doesn't. Yes, he, if he has zero ore, that's one life damage, is it not? Yes, I, I don't understand how <laughs> I don't understand how this card hasn't been played yet. I just I, I don't know what the hesitation is. How are we not playing the card? What? Why? Huh? I mean, but okay. Okay, glancing strike. It's one life damage. It goes back on top. Why didn't we do this earlier? And why are we still not playing the card that gives us one life damage? I'm losing it, guys. I'm starting to... I don't have anyone else in commentary to object to me. I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like I'm missing something. It's like, oh, Michael, you're purple or whatever my name is. You're stupid. There's other cards you could have played, which is like, maybe. But like, I don't know. I'm going insane here. I don't understand how we're not playing the card that allows us to get one life damage for free over and over again. 
I am losing it. What? Why are we highlighting a rabbit step? Who cares about rabbit step? <laughs> but windy stage, maybe. I don't know. We're just highlighting all the cards, whatever. But I don't know. I'm I'm starting to lose it, guys. <laughs> All right, so Glancing Strike comes down here. Um, M4 just has to take it to life. Or oh, actually, is he mathing out or not? <laughs> is he mathing out Sugakage? No, there's no point of mathing out Sugakage. You're playing against the Koyo. It doesn't matter. Just take it to life. Nothing else makes sense. Urinami Storm does not achieve you anything. Actually, does Urinami Storm achieve him anything? The answer is maybe. That's the honest to God answer. Urinami Storm is storming this. Okay, so this is actually a strategy with... Um, Yurina that I do want to talk about. Urinami Storm immediate benefit seems that it reduces two damage uh, dealt to you to Aura. Um, this is true, but it also has an effect where your opponent is forced to take two Aura damage. And I think that's the effect that M4 wants to highlight. Because if you see this card, you're like, oh, okay, just reduce two Aura damage. I know that Glancing Strike doesn't deal any Aura damage, right? But it makes it to where your opponent is forced to take two aura damage. And in this case, it would have dropped Aryan to zero aura. And he only has one card in hand. But he does have two vigor. So he would probably just spend the vigor to get the aura back. Which uh, would put him at three aura. And that wouldn't be a low enough aura to where M4 would be comfortable playing it. So he chooses not to, which is the correct decision. But let's assume that Aryan has zero vigor here. Um, and the Uranami Storm was played. Um, if that's the case, then it would make it to where um, it might be worth doing. Is he going to play it? Oh my god, he plays it. Winnable. Takes it to life. Has to take this to life. Well, actually, is Iron Army Storm interesting here now? No, right? There's no way. It goes to two aura. Mm, no way, right? Two aura. You're coming into a slash... Hilt Strike, Brandish, no. Okay. So Arya does end up playing the card. I'm not sure why he sequenced it the way that he did. Uh, I don't think there was a reason for him to sequence the way that he did. Um, but it just does a sequence it this way, which is like, sure. Eh. So M4 should be taking this to life. If he chooses Aura, then that's just goofy. Yeah, okay. Um, so he does play that card, which is good, because I was really hoping he did play that card. So he still has all four of his units. Um, oh, Calvary comes down. But why? Huh? Okay. It's no reactions. So now it doesn't have reactions. So now what? Okay. Sure. Actually, has M4 shown induce? Does anyone know? Induce is a hitting card, right? Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, because um, if Aryan would have known his entire deck, then it could be Rush of Blades for his last card, which is why he takes that to life. I talked about this interaction um, a few days ago in, uh, when I was uh, talking in uh, Discord. Um, Rush of Blades has the effect of if you took aura damage this turn, um, this attack gets plus one, plus one. So the trick is that you play Caltrops. It's a 2-1. You take it to Aura, and then you take a 4-3, which gives you 3 life damage, which is pretty devastating in uh, Sakura Arms. So that's the reason that um, you see Aryan taking all these Caltrops to life. Two one comes down, or 2-1 comes down. See, I think Aryan just would have had it if he just would have done the thing earlier. Now it's a lot closer than it needs to be. So 2-1. Uh, is there tricks here? Tricks, tricks. Um, 
Oh, I mean, there are tricks. There's induced brandish. That's the biggest trick here. Induce brandish, and then yeah, you can't. And then he, then if you have mortal flowers, then you Sukakage crush him, and then the game ends. Um, but I mean, Enforce should just play out his hand at this point. We're late in the game. You're probably not going to get another reshuffle. That's something else uh, for you uh, Obro players out there to think of. There's not going to be another time to reshuffle. You might as well just play out all your traps. Although there could be arguments made for some final blow shenanigans or some resolve shenanigans, but this has not happened. Just play out the cow chops, play out the slash. I mean, just put all the pressure on your opponent, um, in my opinion here. Um, this makes them back against the wall. Arion's coming into two cards. We know one of them is Glancing Strike. Um, so ending your turn at R3, but I don't think it's just... Glancing Strike's just not going to be enough. Um, that's the honest truth, um, even if Glancing Strike comes down. So ending your turn in R3 is rather negligible. Also, I mean, he's hiding a Mikazura. I mean, if he wants to play the Mikazura, then, I mean, sure, whatever, go ahead. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight flare. No, nine flare? Three, six, oh yeah, nine flare, ten flare, Uranami, and Sugakage. Yeah, it all lines up. Maybe he should play Mikazura here. Yeah, Caltrops, back up, Mikazura. Or trick. I mean, there's tricks all over the place here, actually. He should play the Mikazura before he plays the Slash, because he can bluff Brandish this way. That's what he should do. And um, Arion's really lacking in his stronger attack, so yeah. I think this is locked up, I think, for M4, in my opinion. Unless M4 blunders, uh, which is possible, it's just not very likely. But yeah, so Caltrops back up. Mikazura takes it to... He has to take it to Aura. I mean, to life, I mean, to respect Bandish. Slash comes down, extra life. So this should be um, almost just three life damage, is it not? And he passes. God, I love M4. I can get a Vigor, gets another one. It's two cards. Well, you can get Glancing Strike back on top of your deck. Why not? Actually, no, he's just going to recover a bunch. I really hope he doesn't recover a bunch. That's not a... I just can't believe it. I cannot believe that M4 did not just play out his hand here. Okay. Let's play out his hand. Arion's down two life. What does he do? He gets one life back. And that's it. And he left it at one vigor to resurge his endless snow, because why not? I mean, and he, oh my god, I'm actually starting to tilt. He had the two, three, and he had the Takoyo attack. It's in the discard pile. I mean, it's in the played pile. If the discard was in the played pile, then, like, what? He's not going to reshuffle this turn. You know Glancing Strike is coming up. I mean... I don't know. I think in this line, I think he could have held on to um, zero vigor this turn and just, I don't know, played out the rest of his hand. But, you know, whatever. I mean, the punish here is just, like, so minimal. I mean, the zero vigor is just, like, going to zero vigor and the punish card is in the played pile. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. Uh, I just cannot believe the amount of like, like as I saying, playing passive. I don't have any. I don't have any uh, hard feelings against defensive play. That's fine. But there's a difference between playing defensive all the time and like for it to be the proper strategy versus just strategies that just don't make any sense. Um, I think the way that both players have played defensively at certain points in the game have just been probably like demonstrably incorrect like i i i cannot think of a world where you don't play calchop slash here mikazura slash and correct me if i'm wrong it is mikazura and not um it's not tobakage is it because that's the only other special you could play and eh, arian just plays out his hand here i mean sure he takes one life damage i don't Aranami this actually Aranami it just Aranami it this game's over get him to zero this, this has to be lethal just Aranami. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, with Mikazura, this is lethal. Just just Uranami. Just Uranami. Sure, he has two vigor. I mean, actually, no, you can't. Can you? Uh, oh, this sucks. Can you not Uranami?